So I'm going to debunk uh, this Tartaria myth that uh, the thousand year millennial reign has already happened. And um, well, let's start off with God Rules, who uh, has got some very warped uh, interpretations of prophecy. So I created that video. Rather amazing, actually. There are many texts that surround the good book. And apparently a lot of them say things I didn't realize that specifically talk about the 1,000 years or millennial, as you would say, kingdom that the king of kings is over. And according to these texts, it would indicate that it already occurred. And what's so odd about it or interesting about it is that I've actually found a lot of things correlating to it that back it up and substantiate it, including through history. And I'm going to get into that in a second here. First, just look at this building. It's just absolutely stunning. This is out in the middle of nowhere. Uh, as you can see, it's on a beach. It has a tide. So th I'll just break off there. It seems to be that they want to justify this Tartaria uh, as there's a lot of evidence in architecture and buildings that they can't make these buildings now. And so they show you a picture of a building and say, look at the magnificence of it. It's, it's, it's way beyond what you could do now. That means the millennial reign's already occurred. Okay. So that's, 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 their, that's their evidence of their madness. This castle has no plumbing in it. How did they get food to it? They don't even have an official road. They have this makeshift road, which I believe gets covered with water anyways at different parts times of the day. Um, absolutely stunning inside of it. You wouldn't even believe how beautiful it is. I mean, it's just amazing, actually. And this is one of those buildings, one of those buildings that they somehow managed to make by hand out in the middle of nowhere. Who transferred all these materials? It doesn't even make a lot of sense. And honestly, if you look at the story behind it, it really doesn't make sense. You're just like, what? I'll get into that later. We're not going to get into that right now. But I found this, I stumbled onto this video here, uh, made by this channel, The Unexpected Cosmology, 7,000 year timeline. And he goes through some interesting texts. We're talking pseudobrigraphial texts, which of course I've covered things like that in the past, that point to the King of Kings coming back 500 years after he was here. False. And there's a lot of things correlating to this. I'm going to show you all these texts. Let's see. Here we go. I, I, there's actually multiple. So that means he came out 500 text. AD. Okay, yeah, yeah, right. A number of them. Uh, and I went through uh, a number of them on my other video as well. I'm going to try to get into some other things as well in this video. I just want to recap some of this because it's so amazing and, and unbelievable. Uh, okay, so the idea or concept in a lot of these pseudographical texts is that there's 7,000 years of history. And obviously the last 1,000 years is the day of rest which would be the thousand year, you know, millennial, as you would say, kingdom, right? Makes sense. So you have 6,000 years of normal history, okay? It says in a lot of these texts that the king of kings would come down the first time in 5,500 time frame from, the, from day one, 5,500 years. Uh, I don't know what um, official time scale that would be, but basically starting at year... So I just pause there. He's using... Um the book of Adam and Eve, and I do agree with this uh, book, um, and the prophecy of the five and a half thousand years, which is the cross. So we, he's using this as his first Zero, 5, text. 5,500 years later. So he would be coming right at the end of this week, before the day of rest. So 5,500 years, you only have 500 years before the millennial, as you would say, kingdom, the thousand years. Okay? That's not true. So... It says here, and there's a lot more that corroborates this. You'll see what I'm getting at. And there's lots of texts. Here you have first Adam and, of course, Eve, 38. And it says here, but only when the 5,500 years are fulfilled, at that time I will give you the fruit from the tree of, you know, life, and you will eat and live forever, like he did initially in, in of course, Eden, right? Really interesting. 5,500 years. Okay, so there's one example. Then you got more. You have lots more, actually. This is from second Adam and, of course, Eve, as well as in chapter, looks like 12. At the end of the great five days and a half, concerning which I have made a promise to thee and thy father, I will send my word, Logos, and save thee and thy seed. Very interesting. There's another text. 
Here's yet another one. This is a different book. This is three different books, and, we're, and there's actually more. <laughs> okay. Uh, this is not to be right now, but in future times, when 5,000 years will be completed. Then at the, at the five and a half thousandth year, the beloved sun, okay, will come down to earth. So he's going to repeat it. Uh, bring back to life Adam. Yeah. Isn't that very interesting? Okay, there's more. And, and there's even more corroboration that even relates to Revelation. You'll see here in a, in a little bit. I'm going to get into a lot of stuff here. Okay, here we go. Because thou canst by any means obtain it till the last day and times, namely till 5,500 years be passed, then will Mashiach, the most merciful son, come to earth and raise again Adam. Same time, others as well. And that it, was it the talks cross. about this, I think in Matthew or something at the end of it, that others were raised as well. And when at that time the most merciful son, all right? So I did a video on Melchizedek, and I, I showed you how some of the paintings where they depict the cross, they have the skull of Adam at the bottom and the blood of Christ going on the skull of Adam. Come down to earth, you will introduce our father Adam into paradise. What did he say to the man on, you know, we're talking... So the, the, the texts say that basically Christ, when he descended into hell, like he says in Peter, he went down and got Adam and took him. ...and cross next to him, thou shalt be in paradise. Very interesting. Okay, so there's some more. There's actually a lot more. And, and I'm going to actually corroborate this with history a little bit. I'm going to show you some rather intriguing things that are going to really blow your mind. Um, especially if you didn't see my other video. <laughs> This is in Nicodemus that says that. Okay, we see this five thousand. Okay, so there's a gospel of Nicodemus, which is also called the Acts of Pontius Pilate. This particular text is, um, in my opinion, somewhat unreliable. I I don't agree with this idea of what he's saying about this this six thousand years, and this is basically what he's um, hanging his whole argument on is that. This text in Nicodemus says that there's only going to be 6,000 years. So it's basically Beelzebub is talking to the devil. And they're, they're saying that basically when Christ comes down, what happens in the text is Christ comes down to hell and the, uh, the, the devils in hell are, are overwhelmed with the Son of God coming down. And the one devil says, look, I've got it written down here that um, there's going to be 6,000 years and so, uh, which is the end of the world, and at the time it isn't it isn't yet. Which kind of like is the similar thing to what the the demons within the man uh, by the gatherings saying when they say, "Well, uh, have you come to torment us before the time?" Right. So it's like the demons have this idea of the end of the world and how much time they have before the great eternal judgment. So he's he's using a, an apocryphal text called the Gospel of Nicodemus to say that, you know. 6,000 years. 5,500 everywhere. So what happens at year 6,000? Right? Well, that's the end when you have the thousand year, of course, millennial. Right? And it says here, And Beliar said to Sheol, Look carefully who it is that. It is Eliu and Shonach. This is Elijah and Enoch. Okay? The two, you know, olive, of course, trees. Right? In Revelation. It says that the... Then Sheol answered death and said, Not yet are 6,000 years accomplished, so it's not them. So this one's asking another one, Is this is this Elijah or Enoch? No, 6,000 years haven't passed yet. So that's saying that they come at the 6,000 year uh, time frame, which is 500 years after the King of Kings originally came, when he was born. <laughs> that fits into what it says in, in, the, in the last book, in the good book. Okay, and, and I'm... So it's so false. The conclusion is false because he's he's creating this idea that um, we have uh, six, according to the six days. I mean, I actually agree with this idea of, as Peter says, a day to the Lord is a thousand years, and a thousand years is one day. But it depends as to where you're going to say. The end of the world comes because it doesn't necessarily mean that because the seventh day was the day of rest that means that that is the end of the world and the seventh day is going to be the millennial kingdom so the thousand years equals this sabbath rest because we've actually looked 
um, in Hebrews 4 recently, which I'm not sure that many people know this, uh, that the author, who I believe is Clement, is referring to that rest as being born again. Uh, we, we looked at that because we said, you know, Joshua didn't give them rest. And David spoke of another day, which was called today. And, you know, you can't enter into that rest if you have hardened your heart. OK, so we've already established uh, this 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 teaching. So what he's what he's doing is he's hanging everything on his idea that you have six days and the, and the world ends at the close of the sixth day, which would be 6,000 years. And then, or that, that particular world pertaining to the millennial kingdom being ushered in on the beginning of the seventh day, which is the 7,000 years. And I'm going to produce some uh, texts now, uh, which uh, dispute this. And I'm going, to, I'm going to talk through them and I'm going to reply uh, according to the, the 10 weeks prophecy in the book of Enoch, which works basically the same way. So uh, instead of um, days, like it says five and a half days, we're dealing with weeks here, but it's it's basically the same thing. Uh, each week uh, indicates a thousand years. So at the start of uh, this, we have Enoch saying, I was born in the seventh of the first week. So if you break uh, a thousand years down into, into uh, segments of a hundred years, it's saying he was born in the year 700, 700 years after Adam, which will which will uh, correlate to uh, the genealogy in Genesis, I, I, I'm pretty sure. And um, if we start here, we will be um, showing how this works. He says, well, judgment and righteousness still endured. So, so there was still godliness in, in the uh, antediluvian world at that time. But what he's going to show us is as we go into the second week, which is the second thousand years of creation, that everybody's going to uh, apostatize and as it says and after me there shall rise in the second week great wickedness and deceit shall have sprung up and in it there shall be the first end so that's the first end of the world which we knew happened by water right and it says and in it a man shall be saved we know him as Noah so in this prophecy uh, you know, uh, Enoch was the, the grandfather of Noah. And we know that Noah took the book of Enoch onto the ark. And that's how this has been preserved amazingly. Also through the Church of Ethiopia, but also in the fragmented copy in the Dead Sea Scrolls. But basically, it's basically we have the complete version from the, uh, the Church of Ethiopia, which is amazing. Um, and very grateful for. Uh, obviously, Jude mentions the book of Enoch so we have the first the first end so by water by water and fire the two the two worlds are are destroyed so the first water the second fire which kind of mirrors baptism doesn't it the purification of the baptism of water and the baptism of fire which uh, well that's not, that's not not for now we're gonna we're gonna uh, give the exegesis on Enoch's 10 weeks as best as I can so we're going into the third week now it says after that the third week as it's closed a man shall be elected as the plant of righteous judgment and his posterity shall become the plant of righteousness forevermore so this is Abraham and the covenant which came first didn't it because although that uh, covenant was enacted second because the, the old what we call the old covenant with Moses came came into action first but it was it was actually Abraham's covenant that was that came first didn't it so that's talking about abraham in the third week which is the, th the the third thousand years or it could be the third day that's what we're talking about there so we've we've got enoch in the first week Noah in the second week and the third week we've got abraham and then up next we've got the fourth week so the fourth thousand years uh it says at its close visions of the holy and righteous shall be seen and a law for all generations and an enclosure shall be made for them so this is talking about the law and the prophets okay visions of the holy and righteous shall be seen that's the prophets and a law for all generations so we're talking about moses here moses the lawgiver on, on sinai 
So, you know, when it says about law for all generations, uh, you know, it depends how you interpret that law. If you're going to interpret it by the letter, like the Pharisees, I suppose you'll be cut off, won't you? Uh, like, like what the Hebrew roots are doing now. Um, you know, they ignore that bit in, in the New Testament where it says the law is spiritual to their own downfall. So uh, we're, now we're coming into, as it says, after that, in the fifth week, at its close, the house of glory and dominion shall be built forever. This is important. After that, in the fifth week, so we're dealing now with what, what correlates to the five and a half days as in the book of Adam and Eve and, and, and the, the beginning of the video. Uh, with the God Rules channel, he got hold of the Book of Adam and Eve and was saying about the five and a half days, the five thousand five hundred years. After that, in the fifth week, at its close, the house of glory and dominion shall be built forever. What? What is the house? Is it literal? Is it the house of Israel? I think so. That would be my interpretation of it. House or the house of God, house of Israel, built eternal. Why? Because of the cross. Right. There was. The church was formerly a desert and then it became fruitful, didn't it? Because of the cross. So the fifth week's all about the cross. Um, after that, after that, at it, after that, in the sixth week, all who live in it shall be blinded, and the hearts of them shall godlessly forsake wisdom. The hearts of them shall godlessly forsake wisdom, and in it a man shall ascend. And at its close, the house of dominion shall be burnt with fire. And the whole race of the chosen root shall be dispersed. So this, I have some trouble with this. Um, you know, um, I can't know everything. But it sounds very much like it's talking about the old covenant, the Jews. That obviously there was, you know, the cross. There was a certain amount of time for the Jews to be converted and it seems to be saying that uh, you know they were blinded and they forsook wisdom. And when it says a man shall ascend, I mean I presume that's talking about Christ ascending up to heaven. And at its close, the house of the dominion. At its close, the house of dominion shall be burnt with fire. I mean, is that the temple of Jerusalem? And then the whole race of the chosen root dispersed. I, I mean, do we take this literally? I mean, you would be talking here. The 6,000 week is, you know, um, I mean, we're talking about the five and a half days, aren't we? So it would, it, it's kind of strange because it's taken us up to AD 500, isn't it? The, the, the fifth, the fifth thousand years. And then the six, 6,000 years would be from what? Um, 8,500 to 81,500. You know, we're talking like that. So, I mean, I have some difficulty with that in some ways because, I mean, the the destruction of the old the old covenant and the Jews and the temple was all mixed in with the same time as the new covenant coming in with the cross. You know, just had it was it was all it was all first century, wasn't it? I mean, you could say the downfall of the Jews was officially at Masada with the Roman. The Roman Jewish wars, but I mean the temple was burnt down in 70 AD. So I mean that for me is um, something I'm not 100% on. Uh, I'm totally honest about that. Um, then we have the seventh week, right now, as God rules is, is is saying this is where the millennial kingdom should be. It should be here, but not according to the Book of Enoch, which I think is a lot more reliable than the Gospel of Nicodemus personally. Um, after that, in the seventh week shall an apostate generation arise, and many of its deeds, and all its deeds shall be apostate. And at its close shall the elected, shall be elected the elect righteous of the eternal plant of righteousness, to receive sevenfold instruction concerning all his creation. Okay. Um, seventh week shall an apostate generation arise. We know for a fact that the great apostasy occurred at the Council of Nicaea, which was AD 325. And this great apostasy has continued to this very day. We've had 1700 years of apostasy. And, you know, uh, I say the Antichrist, the Antichrist arose officially, I would say, at the 325 AD Council of Nicaea with Constantine the Great, 
I would say. You know, there are, as it says, there are many Antichrists, and Antichrist is a body. So we've, we have the Ten Horns of the Beast. That begins with Emperor Nero, which is around 60 AD. And then we have the Ten Roman Emperors. I won't go into them now because of time, but it takes you all the way up to Constantine the Great, basically. But these are the apostates. So if we're going back in now to the 8th, the 8th, that takes us, see, from 7,000 to, to the 7th day to the 8th day, you're talking a thousand years each, so we're talking seven and a half thousand years, aren't we? Because we're two thousand years after the cross. Two thousand years after the cross, almost it'd be 2033. So we're talking. We're in the seventh day, aren't we? So the eighth day, in my opinion, is what is the is the millennial reign. If I was to, if I was to uh, be somewhat of a date setter, which I don't agree with. I'm thinking 2033 is going to be the advent of the eighth, the eighth week, um, because of another prophecy I know in two Baruch. But uh, as it says in the book of, of Enoch, it says there will be another week, the eighth, that of righteousness. So if, if there's going to be a, a, an eighth week or an eighth millennium, that of righteousness, that must mean the apostasy has ended, which is Rome, and we know that at the second coming, Rome's going to cease. Um, and it means it means therefore that this must be the eighth week must be the millennial thousand years of Christ because it says it's righteous so a sword's given to it that judgment and righteousness may be executed on those who commit oppression i.e. Rome as it says in the, the prophets how has the golden scepter ceased Sinners will be delivered into the hands of the righteous, and at its close they will acquire houses through their righteousness, and the house of the great king will be built in glory forevermore. So, you know, if you think about Ezekiel's temple vision, it's saying the eternal, it said it's the eternal kingdom comes in, right? Is it a switch between the temporal kingdom and the eternal kingdom? How it says, at its close, the great the house of the great king will be built in glory forevermore. Enoch is now going to talk about the ninth week. This is the 9,000 years after creation, after Adam. And this is the, the millennial reign is over. So we know in the book of Revelation, Satan is, is let out after the 1,000 year millennial reign. And then he's destroyed, isn't he? It has a little, little season, then he's destroyed. So that's where this farce of Tartaria has its... Uh, origin shall we say uh, but nobody says how long the little seasons are for it's just that he goes out and brings the nations of Gog and Magog against the saints and then it says fire comes down from heaven and, and, and destroys him so uh, but as, as it says in, in the book of Enoch the ninth week righteous judgment will be revealed to the whole world and the works of the godless will vanish from the whole earth and the world will be written down for destruction and all mankind will look to the path of uprightness so we know that when Satan is, is cast into hell with the beast and the false prophet, as in the book of Revelation, we know that there is going to be a second re resurrection, which is the general resurrection of all the other souls, good and bad. Um, basically, not the saints, everybody else, and they are judged according to their deeds, uh, the books that were containing all their, their uh, deeds. Okay, then we have... Then we have the 10th week. So this is 10,000 10, years. And it says the seventh part. So again, again, if we break down a thousand years into units of each one being a hundred, it's the 700th year of the 10th week, right? Uh, which is quite precise. And there's a great eternal judgment in which he will execute vengeance amongst the angels. Uh, I mean, Paul says, do you not know that you will judge angels? And he says, the first heaven will pass away and a new heaven will appear. And all the powers of the heavens will shine sevenfold forever. And after that, well, there will be many weeks without number forever in goodness and righteousness. And sin will no more uh, be mentioned forever. Right. That is uh, often in the prophets, uh, the conclusion of just this eternal uh, goodness. There's no... There's no hell, there's no death, there's no devil, therefore there's no sin. 
because uh, you know there's, there's no tempter uh, there's no sin maybe the flesh of man will be restored to its former glory like God created them in which is like the risen Christ you know his his flesh is in uh, when he was resurrected it was it was in that first state when when man was created before the fall and that's what how Paul says we will uh, be like he is in, in that in that state of the glory that he is in so uh, that is the tenth week so ten thousand ten thousand years after the creation uh, is is the great uh, you know new heavens new earth uh, everything is uh, as uh, God has, has destined things to be in the uh, eternity of all all time with um, as it says the meek will in inherit the earth uh, the kingdom this is what the kingdom of heaven is is in its full e eternal glory so you know I hope you found this video uh, interesting uh, I certainly am interested in this um, so I see no I see no case for Tartaria I mean if, if people will have a different explanation for the same system of belief you know if you go to a Hebrew roots person they'll lean on one thing and another will lean on another but ultimately they're both wrong so in the case of God rules you know he was using the gospel of Nicodemus to say that the end of time was 6,000 years so clearly that's not true um, you know clearly Christ has not come with the millennial kingdom as of yet we know that like he's saying it's 500 AD uh, which is is just rubbish I mean that was the time of the barbarian wars when the Germans had uh, conquered Rome so I, we know all about this uh, time period um, so let me know what you think in the comments you know I was talking about uh, a lot of things there so if you have anything to say if you agree or disagree let me know